Okay, this is your video guide for Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell. And we're going to start today with the introduction, The Rosetto Mystery. We're going to be reading this book for two reasons. Um, one reason is Malcolm Gladwell here. He's this kind of goofy looking gentleman with the pretty substantial hairdo going on there. Malcolm Gladwell is a very good persuasive writer and um, he makes an argument in this book about success and about why some people are successful and he makes that argument by using all kinds of different evidence that we wouldn't normally think of um, which makes for a very entertaining read so we're gonna get into outliers and we're gonna look at why people are successful most of us think of success as something that uh, people just do all on their own. We love the story of someone that pulls themselves up by their own bootstraps. And just out of sheer will, they become great at what they do. In this book, Gladwell is going to paint a picture of success that looks a little different. He's going to tell us about some of the hidden factors and things that go into someone being successful. And as you read, I'm going to be asking you to pay particular attention to the tools and tricks that Gladwell uses in his writing. Gladwell is a good writer because he uses lots and lots of rhetorical strategies to make his writing great and to make his persuasiveness all the more powerful. So you're going to be asked to constantly pay attention not only to what is he talking about, but how he's writing. I'm going to start by guiding you through the introduction of the book, which is, which is titled The Rosetto Mystery. Gladwell starts out the introduction by talking about this town in Italy called Rosetto. And just for a frame of reference, here is the city of Rosetto in Italy. This is a map of Italy. You can tell it's kind of heading down towards the, to the toes of the boot down around here. And there is Rosetto right smack dab in the middle of Italy. And he's going to talk about how some people left Rosetto and came to America. He's going to describe the streets of Rosetto and the village of Rosetto in Italy. And this is actually a picture of Rosetto, Italy. And you'll see that it matches well the description that Gladwell gives. The buildings are very close together. And you can tell that people walk in the streets near each other and everything like that. Well, he's going to tell the story of a group of Rosettans that moved to America and settled in Pennsylvania. They found an area of Pennsylvania that was a lot like where they were from in Italy, and they settled there and decided to name their town, what else? Rosetto, Pennsylvania. And the Rosetto, Pennsylvania was strikingly similar to Rosetto, Italy. Here's a picture of Rosetto, Pennsylvania. You'll notice, again, the houses are kind of right up on the streets, and it almost looks exactly the same as Rosetto, Italy. He's telling us about Rosetto for one reason, and that's heart disease. Rosetto has a special relationship to heart disease. Now, heart disease is probably the number one killer in all of America. Most of our health issues, most of our fatalities have to do with heart disease. If you don't believe me, here's a report on the causes of death by age groups in our county, Bear County, in 2011. It lists every cause of death from cancer to murder and if you zoom in and look closely the cause of death that has the highest total really close is cancer malignant neoplasms but the highest in our county as in the rest of America is heart disease so much like Bear County our major cause of death in the nation is heart disease Most people claim that this heart disease issue is a result of obesity and a lot of bad habits like drinking and smoking and that that's why it's the leading cause of death in our country. This is where the Rosetto mystery comes in. Rosetto, Pennsylvania, there was a study done that while Rosettans ate, drank, and smoked like the rest of America, they had almost no cases of heart disease. Rosetto was an outlier. And in this famous study by Brun and Wolf, we found that 
Rosettins were different because they weren't stressed. Not because they ate too much like the rest of us, which they did. And not because they smoke or drank like the rest of America, which they did. But because of stress. While the rest of America is dying of heart disease due in part to stress, Rosetto was an outlier because no one seemed to be very stressed. He'll tell us a little bit why. That should give you an idea of what to expect in the introduction. In each video guide for the book, I'll go over the reading schedule, what you need to be reading, and I'll go over some things you need to do or look at before you read, some tasks that you'll need to do while you read, and then I'll include some activities that we'll be doing after you read each section. So you see that today for the introduction, our goal will be when we read the introduction to read the entire thing, pages 3 through 11, in class, and while we read, complete the corresponding reading guide that you can download from the class website. If we don't quite get finished with the entire introduction, you'll need to add that to your homework. You will, before next class, need to go ahead and watch the next video guide for chapter one. In addition to that, you'll need to read sections one, two, and three of chapter one and complete the corresponding parts of the reading guide for that. We'll try to finish the rest of chapter one in class tomorrow. You are responsible for watching that video and completing the assignments and homework so that you're not lost when we get to the parts of the discussion that are done as a whole class. Before you read the in introduction, you may need to review or research the following rhetorical strategies that we've already discussed. You can watch the lesson videos for any of them that you know. You can look over your notes or even look them up on your own. Um, the strategies that you're going to see and that the reading guide is going to ask you to look for include imagery, logos appeal, shift, rhetorical questions, and addressing the counter argument. If you're not sure what those are, you'll need to take a look at them before we read. You'll have some tasks to do while we read as well. You're going to need, first need to make sure that you fill in the reading guide as you go. It's really hard to do it after the fact because you've got to know the page numbers and you've got to actually find the things while you're reading. You so need to think about the rhetorical triangle and writer's craft which means to think about the interaction between the author, Malcolm Gladwell, the audience, you, and the subject matter. And the writer's craft means to be thinking about the skills, the tools and tricks that Gladwell uses as a writer. Make sure that you also use a dictionary or dictionary.com to find the meaning of words you don't know. This is a great way to expand your vocabulary. In fact, most studies say that encountering new words in your reading is the number one way of expanding your vocabulary. Finally, think about what argument Gladwell is making and what kind of evidence he uses to support it. After you read the introduction, we're going to come together and do an activity. You're going to be asked, based on Gladwell's description of the study of Rosetto by Bruin and Wolf, you're going to be asked to make recommendations for our community to decrease heart disease. You can work on this individually or in a group of two to three, and we'll discuss it more as a class. But the reason we're doing this is to remember, in, in our county, in Bear County, the leading cause of death is heart disease. You'll need to figure out how Rosetto beat heart disease and make recommendations based on that for what we can do as a community to maybe have a chance to beat heart disease. So as a reminder, once we finished all of those activities, you will have homework. You'll need to first finish whatever we didn't finish in class on the intro. Second, you'll need to watch the video for chapter one. Third, you'll need to actually read sections one, two, and three of chapter one and fill in the corresponding parts of your reading guide. All of that will be due at the beginning of our next class. Make sure you have it done. That concludes our first video guide of Outliers. Now get to work.